Howdy, I'm Joseph and this is Tie-Dye Farms and we're a small little farm in Bell Fountain here in southern Benton County and we're on about three and a half acres and we do everything organic and we try to use as little gas as possible, so a bunch of hand tools. Hello, I'm Cynthia Cappell, Midway Farms. We're growing organic and sustainable. Delbert McCombs and uh, part of Earth Rising do organic fruit trees. My project is to grow organically grown fruit trees, one of five nurseries uh, doing that in North America. Louisa Hemacek, Earth Rising Farm. Hi, my name's Nick and this is Abigail. And I'm a farmer at Midway Farms. So the one thing with this ordinance that is really good is it's gonna protect the small person. Now, we're not against having OSU do all the research and everything. I mean, we, we're in a society where we definitely need to have leukemia research done and farming research done. As far as GMOs go, I think we're still in the research stage, not in the implementation stage. It has to be a way where the small guy doesn't get totally stepped on, and yet we can still do the research because it's very important for us to continue moving in, along in science just like it's important for us to understand that the things that have come before with the farming shouldn't also be just thrown out so i think there's some balance we can create there we are definitely in supporting measure 289 we want the right to be able to grow organic and be sustainable i think that organic farming is where it's at we don't need pesticide processes for growing and killing the bugs because we like the bugs here. GMO free food is so important to us because we feed our animals this food and we want to ensure that our animals are getting the best quality food possible so that way when we drink milk or eat eggs we get the best quality food possible. With our farm we've gone as far as not even feeding alfalfa to our animals because we believe that the GMO alfalfa that's contaminating the crops isn't even safe for our animals, let alone our children. I don't understand why we don't have this fundamental right to be sustainable, feed our children the food we wish to, that we truly believe is nutritious. Let's do some research. Let's know what we're getting into. Let's not back ourselves into a corner. Let's not have no escape route. Right now, there's no escape route. You see on the side of the rivers, pumpkins that get washed up from upstream from a farm during the flooding. Well, that's seed spreading. Or how many times have you seen beans on the side of the road because a truck took a corner and a few beans fell over? I mean, not just the wind pollination, but there's not a real way to control the genetically modified food from contaminating the rest of the food. Not at this point anyways. One of the seed companies that I purchased seed from, they had a little blurb in the very beginning talking about how half of their seeds are now been contaminated with GMOs so they can't offer them to us anymore. And that was a devastating piece of news, you know, just the reality of that, that all of a sudden half my choices that I was choosing from are now gone, all because of contamination. I feel like the last 30 years we've seen more and more governance by the corporations, many of them from even outside the country, than we have from local people, and I think it's time we reverse that trend. I'd much rather listen to somebody who's nearby and actually producing food than to uh, some highly paid advertising agency that Monsanto has bought to uh, tell us all about everything. I'm voting yes at 289. I support Measure 289 because Measure 289 helps to protect our farm. We support the local food system, Measure 289. Please join us and support your local farms. We're voting S on 289.